You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by The Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the weekly Keep Canada Weird discussion series. If you're new here in Keep Canada Weird, my pal Handsome Aaron Airport and I seek out and explore some of the more offbeat Canadian news stories from the past week. In tonight's episode, which was recorded on May 24th, 2022, we have some explicit children's attire. We have a tale of heroic breastfeeding, and we have an unfortunate update to give you related to the Major Fell Potato Man. So let's get into it. Handsome Aaron Airport. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you, my friend? I'm enjoying the new stardom. Now that we've released our um, our hit album that we recorded 14 years ago, it's been uh, it's been a really busy week between like the marketing and promotional obligations that were that come hand in hand with a hit album. Um, how have you been handling with the, handling the new airport fame? Um, it's it's kind of off in the background and it's calm and quiet and well, relaxing. I'm surprised because I thought the for people who don't know what we're talking about, we played in a band years ago. We've talked about this before. Um, 14 years ago or so, we recorded an album uh, that just kind of sat on our hard drives. <laughs> and then uh, we were motivated to publish it. And we're kind of live action role playing as if it's a hit album. And it's been a lot of fun with our hit album. Yeah, we, we like to pretend that this is the biggest thing the world has ever seen. And and that's the way we're going to continue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's uh, let's get to it. What's been new with you? What's up? Uh, not much. Um, let me think. I wasn't prepared. Even though you ask me this question every week, I'm never prepared for it. I should really think about catalog some of the things that I've done. Keep a journal, uh, maybe, for throughout the week. Uh, I, I can help you. I know something you've done. I was home in Cape Breton over the weekend. I saw you. Oh, and I, yes. I delivered, um, I delivered Ellen's uh, collage to you. Your hater? How did how did you do anything with it? Did you burn it? Put it on your wall? Um, no, I have full intentions of framing it and putting it up on the wall. I, I have to go and get a frame. So once I have it framed, I'll put it up on the wall, and you'll be able to see it in the background of, of each show. Oh, that's a great idea, right over your shoulder or something. Yeah, yeah, that's my plan. So, Alan, you know, I've got big plans for that picture. I very much appreciate it and love it, and and I'm gonna pay it its due. Yeah. Buckle up, Ellen. It, this is going to be the big time. This is the big time. And I'm going to treat your picture that you gave me just like we're treating the airport album. <laughs> 14 million fans are going to look at that picture. Yeah, and 15 years later, I'll actually hang it up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's get to keeping Canada weird. We got a full a full card today. Um, and we also have some kind of updates and feedback to start with. So before we talk about the stories that we're going to cover this week let's talk about some listener mail let's start with that all right do you oh, do, listener mail yes how do exciting you, do you remember we talked about um a pool in i believe it was in bc that had a whole lot of creepy going on you remember this pool yeah i do remember it um there was some kind of a um, a, a flasher uh, remember a he flasher uh, and there was somebody videotaping too that we talked about on their phone or something underneath the stalls yeah like no that. he was one guy was uh videotaping a girl showering i believe and then another guy like had the stall door open and he was just uh right not hiding show. his penis uh at all uh you said penis i'm gonna say even worse today when we get to one of our future stories um you're gonna say it I'm going to say it, yeah. And I, I think we both okay. should, but we'll, we'll get to that. Well, let me tell I you. I won't say it. No, I won't say it. We'll talk about saying it. Uh, let's talk about um, another creepy pool. This one is in Ontario, in Toronto. A listener named Ramona. Oddly enough, I guess she's coming to us with a strange story, but what I like is she's also looking for advice on how to handle this. So listen to this. She came to the right place for advice on how to handle these delicate issues. Hi, Jordan and Aaron. I love nighttime and keep Canada weird. Keep it up. I just wanted to share a pool creeper story. I have a pool creeper that goes to my apartment complex pool. 
Um, I've noticed him, my partner and all my friends that also go to this pool have noticed him. He has a mustache. Um, and he sort of will swim some laps and then spend an extended period of time in front of the one jet that works in the corner of this pool. And he sort of faces the jet and avoids all eye contact. Um, it does seem that this is a nefarious type of activity, um, brainstorming with my friends and some residents. We have thought perhaps, uh, he has an injury. Perhaps this is a physical therapy massage type of jet. Um, but it really weirds us out and I'm wondering if we should say something. Um, yeah, I would be very curious to know what you think and how we could confront this pool creeper. Also, Aaron, it's Reese's. Get out of here. Reese's. Reese's. Everything. Hang up. Thanks. (laughs) He has a mustache. I like that that was a point that she made. Yeah, I actually, um... I'm concerned about that comment. Uh, uh, the mustache, yeah. What does his mustache have to I do with this? I think she's this? just, that's her way, I think, of saying, like, he's your typical kind of, like, pervy guy. Well, every pervert has a mustache. But this isn't fair to, to the wonderful people who have mustaches out there. You know, this is this is kind of painting people with mustaches as perverts. Uh, I think they need just like firearms. There's good firearms owners, but that's why we have like legislation and regulation on how they're used and maintained, and they need to be registered. I think mustaches, in some cases, some of the same rules should apply. But I think that's just one one drop here. Uh, what's what's going on with this guy? So he goes to the pool. He doesn't mm. look at anybody. He just goes does a few laps and then goes over to the corner and faces the one working jet and has it just mm. blast him yeah yeah it's you know it's it's pleasurable i mean would it be? you know i'm sure yeah have you never done this i've never done that no like just uh, you're talking about putting i don't your... do it like in a public pool but like you know when you're younger you've never swam up to the jets and let your dilly dallies swim about in the in the forceful stream. I think um I had a pool growing up in my backyard, my dad's house, and uh, we had the jets, but they didn't like blast hard. Like it wasn't. I I would say um, it's not hard. It's 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 but it's there. It's ever present. Okay, you know it can really you know be a a nice a sensation to 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 swim up to it and. And just present yourself there for a little while. But it has to be done in, in, in your own pool, privately. Mm. You and maybe a few close friends, um, you know, that that's that's the only way um, it should be done. Not in a public pool. So I I, I do stand firm that, that this mustache gentleman or, you know, whatever we'll call him, shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, it, it is definitely weird. And she... Um... She pitched the theory that her, some friends and some other tenants of the building have is that maybe it's some kind of like, like a massage kind of thing from an injury. I guess that's kind of like the best solution or the best answer to that is maybe he has well, a bad yeah, hip. Yeah, but I, yeah, but he'd be putting his hip up to it, wouldn't he? Or like, it seems to me the way she described it is that he's, he's pressing his genitals up to the stream. And not making eye contact. So it's like he knows it's wrong and he's kind of embarrassed by it, but he just cannot resist doing it. She she asks how, and, and I love that we are the people that will weigh in on how, if and how he should be confronted. So I'll tell you how I would do it. Honestly, if, if this was me uh, and I was in her position, what I would probably do is like take a picture and put it up on the internet and put like a little like smiley face over his actual face and write something like this guy does this at the pool every day. Is this weird? That's how I would handle that situation. But I'm not. Uh, yeah, I, I don't recommend. No. Okay. Person, would no. you actually confront the guy? It's complicated because um, the perversion is, is theoretical. It's not uh, strictly proven. So, mm. 
if you were to talk to somebody about it, you would have to say, I think they're getting pleasure from this jet stream. And I think they're doing it publicly in our, you know, apartment complex pool. But in order to prove that would be very difficult. Um, it's, it's, it's a complicated issue. I don't know how to really approach it. If you're looking to do something about it, I would, you could break the jet. No, didn't you need the jet to circulate? I don't Yeah. Yeah. You know, I guess to circulate the water circulate and, 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 and whatnot. I'm not a pool scientist, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> all the, the logic behind the jet, but, um, it's there for a reason and the reason is not originally sexual, but, has been now <laughs> construed into yeah it's been hijacked we'll say um by a mustached pervert but um i think you need to continue to monitor the situation and the behavior and then uh see if it escalates if it doesn't escalate past where it's at i don't know if you have enough ammunition to actually do anything about it Maybe you just got to swim down the other end. Yeah, or make a game out of it. You know, like <laughs> place bets on how long will he be at the jet today? How long, How many laps before mm. he makes his way casually over to the jet? I guess ultimately I think that's just over our heads. It really is. But, um, she... You know, I appreciate that she came to us about this uh, and trusted us enough to uh ask our opinion yeah we're just the wrong guys i'm surprised you've never done Ooh, it George. maybe ramona should give it a try buddy will come down to the pool and he'll be like my jet's getting used by her i'm gonna have to find a buddy get away from my jet <laughs> my jet's cheating on me <laughs> all right well let's uh let's go to another update um this one though oh man i did not expect this to happen I don't know. If I, I haven't. I've thought a lot today about whether or not I want to pronounce the city name correctly. So we talked about the Potato Man of what I refer to as Maugerville, New Brunswick. I uh, got updates or got uh, feedback like crazy that it's spelt like Maugerville, but it's actually pronounced Majorville. I'll, uh, I'll give in and I'll call it Majorville today. Um, but we got an update regarding the Potato Man statue. That's at Silver Valley Farms in Majorville, New Brunswick. If you recall, a few weeks back, we talked about how there was a GoFundMe campaign um, because money was needed to repair um, the decaying concrete potato man statue that is a fixture on in this community people from all over new brunswick and all over canada for that matter have driven through majorville and have seen this smiling waving potato man that looks more like a peanut than a potato to me but anyway you you remember this mm -hmm. update of course right? or this story of course right yeah the giant mr peanut that's actually a potato mm -hmm. well the when we last talked about it they were trying to get money to have this fixed and we talked about bringing a few bags of concrete down and doing it ourselves well i guess it was a bigger deal than that um fortunately the crowdfunding was a huge success they got enough money they needed to hire somebody who was uniquely qualified for this type of concrete restoration work so they found their guy it seemed like the potato man was saved there was a few articles that went around about, you know, things are going to be good. Um, everything was looking bright and sunny. However, for anyone who follows the Silver Valley Farms Facebook page, uh, they've published two posts just over the last three days uh, that provide a grim update. So the first post says, it's a picture of the potato man and, it, and the text reads, it's with sad hearts that we write this post. Mr. Albert DeVoe, who was supposed to restore the Big Potato Man, suddenly passed away this week. May he rest in peace. Uh, but what I think is Keep Canada Weird about this is just hours after making that post, Silver Valley Firms make a second post. 
Due to unforeseen circumstances, we are back into the process of finding a contractor to repair our potato. If you are a contractor and are interested in repairing it, please submit your official quote to osh911 at hotmail.com or submit it in person at Silver Valley Firms, The Big Potato, attention to Daniel Boudreau. And then it goes on to describe a little bit of the particulars of what they're looking for. But yeah, they're back at the drawing board on this. Yeah, yeah. It seems like um, they didn't even let the dust settle on the on on the situation before they're immediately looking for. Yeah, place. and I think there was a little bit of um, what's it called when you rewrite history. There was a bit. I, I think a little bit of rewriting history on the order in the wording of those posts. I think initially they had made a post that said everything all together, like. This person has died. We're looking for you know, new people uh, or yeah. someone new to do it. And I saw some of the comments on that post were uh, kind of scolding Silver Valley firms for maybe being insensitive and saying, like, it maybe would be a good idea to have two separate posts, one to commemorate his life and another one to continue your journey for someone new to um, to do the restoration work. And it seems like they ended up kind of changing their posts around and uh, looking a bit better. But yeah, that's uh, that's sad, and I've I've heard after doing that story mm-hmm. initially and covering the Majorville Potato Man a few weeks back, I've heard from a lot of people in that area who had uh, who and, and again from around Canada who shared their memories of seeing it and driving by it, and it, it certainly is a um, something be- uh, something more meaningful than the giant fiddle we talked about in Cape Breton. Uh, in Sydney, this potato man seems to have touched the hearts of a lot of people. I've got a lot of feedback on it. So I, I now have a different feeling about the whole thing. And I really do hope they get someone to restore it and, you know, and uh, keep it around a lot longer. But it's just a shame that you got a death kind of tied in the middle of that. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, certainly uh, sad to, to hear about that. And and you know, um, might be a little too soon for a Facebook post to come out looking for the yeah, replacement. Yeah, but... like that thing's been decaying there um, for years. You can give it a week before you put the judge. It, it it's just like yeah, you see a company yeah. be like, you know, we're, we're mourning the loss of our, um, you know, our front clerk who's worked here for ten years. You know, uh, rest in peace, Sylvia. And then f- ten minutes later, we're hiring a front desk clerk. <laughs> yeah exactly uh, it reminds <laughs> so, me of in sydney oh well, actually this probably isn't too uncommon but in sydney there's um a uh veterinary clinic and then right in the back of the veterinary clinic is a separate building and business owned by the same people that's a pet crematorium yeah but that makes sense it does make sense it's just it, the optics of the whole thing is a little weird and i kind of feel like this is the uh, like a kind of uh, like a distant cousin of that yeah, yeah, but I mean, typically you get your pet cremated in the same place that it gets cared for. That's that's usually that vets offer pet cremation. Most vets, really. Hmm. Well, um, I want to find a vet that doesn't, and maybe we'll hire them because it's like if they if they do both, they got you one way or another. So w- maybe there's not as much of a drive to save the life if they can just charge you for the cremation. Um, Maybe you mm. want to find a vet that doesn't have a conflict of interest. By That's offering. very conspiracy theory of you, though. Sorry. I don't. Oh. Um, I don't think you should go down that road. We got to go down one more road that relates to death. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to start it weird. This is turning into keep Canada like morbid or grim. But uh, I have one more death story. This one <sighs> came from uh, actually from Frank Magazine. They this morning uh, Frank Magazine posted a. Uh, a photograph from um, like a letters to the editor column of uh, the Chronicle Herald, which is a Halifax based newspaper. They have a section called Voice of the People, which again is like a, a letters to the editor where people can just write their comments or feedback on whatever's in the news and the newspaper will publish them. Uh, what made this particular letter from Lorraine Castell in Greenwood, Nova Scotia interesting is just kind of her solution to. I guess a, a situation in Nova Scotia where we have an aging population, there is a high demand for um, nursing, uh, space in nursing homes and, you know, and care for the elderly because we have an aging population here. Uh, 
she's she's writing a letter to the Chronicle Herald sharing her thoughts on that. Let me read it to you. So she's responding to a May 17th column about we can't afford to lose more CCAs, which is like continuing care assistant, which is kind of mm-hmm. like a nurses. Uh, Lorraine is providing her, her thoughts on that. She, say, she says, and I'll read it verbatim. The author states, every morning, many elderly Nova Scotians suffering from dementia or debilitating physical limitations need help to get out of bed, go to the toilet, bathe, get dressed, and be guided to breakfast. It's a scene found in nursing homes across the province, and for those doing that helping, it's not an easy job. Some residents can be combative. Some require two people to even move them. Now Lorraine gives her thoughts. There's an alternative, which people may not be aware of. It's called B7, Medical Assistance in Dying Legislation, which was passed by the federal government two years ago. Nursing homes are charging families $12,000 per month in some cases to keep a beloved father or mother in a nursing home when these individuals might prefer to use MAID. MAID is the acronym for Medical Assistance in Dying. Please Google MAID to learn what B7, BC7 is all about. It's a perfectly legal choice. Discuss it with your family doctor if you might be interested in learning about this alternative. Signed, Lorraine Castell and Greenwood. Uh, I think that is a hot take. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's <laughs> controversial. Um, like, does she have stocks in medical assisted dying or something? Like, oh, she... I think it's it's pure evil. This is Satan pretending he's. Uh... A, a, a woman in Nova Scotia named Lorraine. Because, uh, yeah, it, I noticed you have an aging population. Have you thought about just wiping them out? Yeah, like it costs a lot to keep your beloved father in care. Perhaps you should talk to your doctor about having him killed. He's in yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's it, I, like... I just think like it, there's, there's a need for like a medical assistance in dying kind of situation in some cases. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like Lorraine is discussing cases where that's certainly like, it hasn't gone that far. She's saying like they need help getting dressed and guided to breakfast, or maybe they need help going to the toilet and bathing. Like she could be like, yeah, she's, she's mentioning the very regular things that, (laughs) that, that, that you go through when you live in a, you know, in an assisted living situation like that, you know, when you reach a certain age, you need help with regular everyday things. And she's suggesting that you, once you reach this point, maybe you can, you should consider just ending it. Yeah. And well, not even you should consider ending it because your she's, family should, yeah. your family should be considering ending it for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder if, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very bizarre. Yeah. Well, I also like that. She says like, you know, Google made and learn what it's about. It's a perfectly legal choice. I read that as like, you know, it's not illegal to kill these people. Like if there's a bill there to protect you, you know, if you're spending a fortune and they have to get carried to the bathroom, talk to your doctor, get them killed. <laughs> Let's get on with it here. We got a full card. Let me give you a bit of run, a rundown of the stories we have this, to discuss this evening. So what we have on tap is children's wear, specifically explicit children's wear, and a story of extreme breastfeeding. Where do you think we should start this? Well, you know, we've talked about a lot of morbid things right off the top. So why don't we get to the breastfeeding uh, situation? Okay. It's it's a little lighter. So I think we need to come in with something. It's lighter, but it's, man, the, the, the woman in this story is my spirit animal. She is my hero. Luckily, there's video of this incident because if there wasn't, I, the video is, is even like the, well, hold on. I gotta stop you. Why is she your hero? Because she's. She, let me read the story, and I think a lot of people. I will think agree we need to me. talk a, a bit more about because she's why taken she's your hero. very few people. Yeah, but after I, let's get into the story, and then let's get okay. into that. I just want to put a pin in that. You we'll know, come back just to that. Flag it for later. Okay. Yes. So the article, the story that we're going to be talking about is a breastfeeding. British Columbia mom who saves her pet goose from an eagle attack. 
And she does all this at the same time. An unlikely intervention saved the life of Frankie the Goose, and the entire incident was caught on camera. <laughs> A security camera captured the moment when a bald eagle swooped down, grabbed the goose, and started dragging it away. That's when Kate Oakley, who was busy breastfeeding at the time, rushed outside and scared off the bird of prey. She says the family had already lost three chickens to the hungry eagle, and she wasn't about to let it take Frankie, too. Well, I knew right away that she, when she was on our front door, something was up. Um, then we heard her calling. And I right away went to the front door, and that's when I saw large eagle wings coming down, flung the door open. Um, it had grabbed her by the neck, but I startled it enough that it didn't get a, quite a good grip. So I uh, chased it up the driveway, and it let go, and Frankie came running back home. <laughs> Luckily, Frankie wasn't injured in the eagle attack. She seems unfazed by the whole thing, really, and she has now resumed her patrols of the family's property. That's the basics, but what the article doesn't yeah. really describe is from the video that you see, it looks like it's taken from a security camera that's like pointed at her driveway. You see- Yeah, like a Nest security camera or something, you know, one of those. Yeah, you see the, the goose just kind of waddling around. An eagle comes down from the sky and the goose and the eagle are kind of fighting with the eagle trying to pull it away. And then the breastfeeding mother comes running out of the front door of the house the only thing she has on is her underwear, like no bra or anything, just her underwear. And she has the baby. She's holding the baby and the baby is still nursing as she chases the goose and the eagle. She scares the way the eagle and then the goose comes running back to her. And then the video ends with her still holding the baby and the goose walking back towards the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how can she not be your hero? That's a, like that's. A, to, well, you I, the only reason I, I flagged that was because like you said she's your hero yeah because that's taking like your care. hero yeah she is today she is my hero uh, i've only learned of this story yeah today. but are you are you someone who who throws around like to say it's your hero like this is now the the person that you're gonna you know keep in your mind and and the the rest of your life as, as your hero because that to me when you say your hero that's like who you're taking on as 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 the hero that you're going to use to guide and and, and inspire you the rest okay. of your life um she is one of my heroes and she is the hero of the day for me today what she did the baby is like peacefully nursing as she's running down the driveway in her underwear chasing away an eagle who's trying to fly away and eat her goose that's a, I think that, I don't know. I don't know how you can't be like, man, this, she kicks ass. That's how I feel. Oh yeah. I think, I think saying something like that's, she kicks ass is, is accurate. Okay. You know, I should have said she's one of my heroes or just a hero. She impressed me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, um, it was really cool. Yeah. It was, it was, it was really cool. What, it, and, uh, um, what about sharing the video is, is that, like uh there's there's kind of like a i don't know if taboo is the right word but there's like a sensitivity around um breastfeeding like there's always a you'll always see an article where like someone was at the yeah. mall breastfeeding and someone said something to them and you know or, or just weird things like that she puts up a video that goes viral where she only has her underwear on and it's not even like kind of flattering like the underwear are kind of like you can tell she was like laying in bed with her baby in her underwear. Well, that, I don't now I disagree with you there. I, I, I don't find anything unflattering about the underwear. Uh, it looks like she has kind of a wedgie though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to I don't know the proper word for it. You know, I, I don't know who doesn't have a wedgie when they're I don't know. It's the underwear didn't strike me as like, oh man, too bad she wasn't wearing proper underwear going out oh, there. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I didn't mean it like that. So you have a background in the style and fits of women's underwear uh, due to your history working at La Senza um, as a stalker. What I... Oh, no. Stock clerk. <laughs> as a stalker. <laughs> as a, as a, a, a product stalking person. No, like... Okay, because to say you... Yeah, just... You were yeah. a stalker at Lissette. Yeah, yeah. The, the stock room attendant. 
Okay. So you kn- you know more about it. Maybe you went to like I th- I was trying to say like she didn't have like nice underwear or something. What I meant more so is that if if you were if like I'm willing to bet if you were going to have a video up on the internet that th- tens of thousands of people were going to look at, you'd want to at least and you were going to be just in your underwear, you'd at least want to make sure they were like you know on properly or something they like look that. I, on I feel like normally like they, I don't see any kind of uh malfunction in, in in how she's wearing the underwear or any there was no thought in my mind of like oh man like she's got a huge wedgie and um but do you, does it take guts to share a video yeah absolutely of this? yeah because it's you know it's it's a video of you topless running out you know breastfeeding uh chasing an eagle down the driveway yeah i don't know if i would have <laughs> if i was in my underwear chasing you know i have sometimes get raccoons in the backyard if a raccoon got a hold of my cat you know I don't think I would be sharing an image of me in my underwear chasing that raccoon down the driveway. Um, but this is a cl- like I can understand why they were compelled to share it because it is a it, it's a, the video is only like ten seconds long, but it is if that, mm-hmm. but it is amazing. It is an amazing moment. Yeah, no, caught crazy. on camera. Mm-hmm. I salute her. Me too. Absolutely um, saluted for sure. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll make sure that I'm wearing proper underwear at all times at home, just in case I'm filmed running down the driveway at any point in time. <laughs> all right. Before we move on, I have just one other short, uh, short story to tell you about. Uh, this is a listener. Mark had sent this to us. Um, this is just a brief story from. UMB, which is University of New Brunswick. Uh, this, for whatever reason, it didn't become a major story. I was only able to find it listed in uh, in one paper, and this involves a hazmat response at the at UMB, U- University of New Brunswick. And hazmat is like a special team that deals with hazardous materials. Um, let me just read you the short article because uh, I'm, I'm very curious what you think happened here. An urgent fire response turned into a coffee run at the University of New Brunswick campus in Fredericton on Friday morning. Assistant Deputy Fire Chief David McKinley said the department got a call of smoke that had set off an alarm at Head Hall, the University of New Brunswick Engineering Building, at 5.18 a.m. As the smoke was coming from a lab, firefighters donned hazmat gear, fearing for the worst. But the source of the smoke turned out to be coffee grinds someone had left in a small rectangular countertop heating unit. McKinley couldn't explain the reason behind the coffee in the heating unit. UMB spokesperson Kelsey Pia offered no explanation when reached later Friday. At this point, we're still investigating, so there's not much more information available. Pai did say, however, that there was no damage to the structure or risk to anyone and that normal operations resumed after firefighters gave the all clear. Firefighters cleared the lab of smoke and left the scene. So mm. what what I take it as is uh, the, you've probably seen those things that are like, um, like a heating pad. You put your coffee mug on and you plug it in and it keeps your coffee warm. I wonder if it was if it was one of those and maybe just they left it on overnight because this happened at 5 18 a.m maybe eventually it just boiled down till they're just whatever like mm-hmm. would be at the bottom of a boil down coffee cup and that stuff started to burn and it would stink yeah like maybe if they had coffee grinds like in a french press like if you had a french press and you were keeping it maybe on a heated element because the coffee grinds would stay in a French press, right? And then you, would, if you kept it on a heated element, and then eventually the coffee grinds started to burn and catch fire, mm-hmm. um, or just or just kind of smoke. And if you've ever, there's a a coffee roaster kind of place not far from where I live. And if you go by there when they're actually roasting the beans, it, like it doesn't smell like coffee. It's this disgusting stink. Mm-hmm. If you smelt this stuff coming from like a science lab at a university. I too would be like, I'm not going in there without, you know, my suit on. <laughs> my hazmat suit. <laughs> um, and then you go in and find, you know, just some coffee grinds smoldering. But Well, especially everybody's, you know, on edge with the laboratory leaks ever since the pandemic. You know, that's kind of one of the theories around. Oh, you didn't you just accuse me earlier of being a conspiracy theorist? No, I said people are on edge. I didn't say that I believed. 
Or maybe I do believe that. I don't know if that's really in the conspiracy category anymore, because a lot of people still believe that, uh, you know, COVID came from a lab, but I don't know. Hmm. Um, But, I mean, that topic is is in the atmosphere. Uh, It's in the public domain. You're not... Yeah. I'm not championing in it, or championing in it. Uh, (laughs) Oh, God, I'm going to get a voicemail about that. (laughs) <laughs> no, yeah. no, um, I'm not saying that, that that if I believe it or not, but like people think about viruses escaping from laboratories now a lot more than they did, you know, two and a half years ago. So when you see smoke coming from a laboratory in a university, you're probably preparing for the worst. Yeah, well. Let's move on to our final story of the night. And this is a good one. We, we kind of teased this earlier because there's, um, I don't know who's going to describe the items at hand here. Uh, before we reviewed our topics for tonight, were you aware of the, um, the complaints that Amazon were facing for, for the explicit inappropriate sexual children's wear they had been selling no i was not aware before i read the article that you sent me a hoodie a dress a bathing suit sized for and modeled by children but this is not typical children's wear these items display the sexually explicit message i love followed by a word that's slang for penis. This is literally supporting pedophilia. Carolina Zikova was shopping on Amazon for a swimsuit for her niece when the expectant mother uncovered some of the items for sale on the website. I was shocked and I was terrified, furious, furious. Following a CBC News inquiry, Amazon removed the items and said it will take action against the third party sellers which had posted the products. It's absolutely outrageous. This child protection advocate says Amazon isn't doing enough to control what third parties sell on its site. It's clear that these things are bypassing uh, their systems and that's just not good enough when we're talking about this type of you know, sexual harm to children. Amazon said it constantly scans items posted on its site and immediately removes ones that violate its offensive products policies. Nazi flags, Hitler youth knives, and... But sometimes, products get overlooked. In 2015, Amazon removed Nazi paraphernalia only after CBC News investigated the matter. And sometimes problems linger. Even after Amazon pulled the sexually explicit children's wear, the Canadian Centre for Child Protection found other indecent children's items on the site. Following further CBC inquiries, those products were also removed. There's always new products coming in. This retail expert says with hundreds of millions of items for sale, it's virtually impossible for the retailer to vet every single one. This is an ongoing issue that um, they're going to have to uh, come to terms with and figure out a, a more durable solution. Amazon says it's now reviewing its product catalog to weed out any more sexually explicit children's items. But Zikova says it's too late for her. She has cancelled her membership. Uh, I think Amazon has so many products, they're they're never going to be able to monitor everything. But that doesn't change. Like, how does this even end up being sold on there? Uh, and who, a, well, let's start with who wants to sell this. Like, who's this third party vendor that wants to sell this kind of children's clothing? And who would they think they, they're gonna who are they who's gonna buy it <laughs> like who's buying that did you look at the items yeah it was like hoodies and what a bathing suit and well i saw one that was a dress and the the image that went along with the ad was this little girl who looked like she was like seven it's a white dress and all over the dress it's like i heart c-o-c-k yeah all, all over the dress uh, there's a boy wearing a t-shirt with it and it's and it's not even like like you, the design itself is like the quickest easiest most basic font and everything so i i just i can't understand why it's on there mm-hmm. that's and what i'm I trying to understand ima- like why why before it even reaches amazon who unless it's like 
like someone wanted to, to, to see what they could get away with, you know, like on Amazon, like maybe they're like, let's see how far we can go with the most, you know, offensive, ridiculous product on. And let's see how completely inept Mm -hmm. Amazon is at controlling what products are sold on their site. Like maybe nobody's ever actually purchased any of these and they, they never had any intentions of actually selling them. And it was more of an experiment. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Well, as an experiment, I kind of, when I saw the listings for it and again, these listings, they, they say they were pulled, the children's versions were pulled. But if you search that phrase, they still sell it in all the adult sizes. And now the models showing it off are just adults wearing these bizarre items. Um, but just as a test, I just started writing some like nasty words into my Amazon search. And I've realized that it's like they have, they literally have everything, including just awful, nasty things, which is, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I think of it. I I guess I'm not surprised. What else did you see on there? I, I don't even want to get into it. Well, I feel like, you know, like how there's the dark web where you can go on the dark web and like seek out illegal things i feel like there should be amazon not should be but i feel like there kind of is amazon dark where if you kind of Mm -hmm, search the right way you can you can tap into all of these provocative products yeah you just got to dig down because amazon uh, the algorithm just like on social media sites it it serves you certain things like the more popular things or the thing that has an interest in selling you because it gets a bigger commission or whatever the case may be but the stuff that that amazon's algorithm completely ignores is the stuff that is just basically on like the their version of like the dark web it's just buried deep in their catalog of i wonder you know how like amazon like whenever you search for like say you're looking for uh a computer desk you know, and so then you search on Amazon computer desk and then all these different options of computer desks come up and there's always one that's Amazon's choice, you know, of the, you know, in there. So here's Amazon's choice of a computer desk that you could buy and it's highly rated and it's, you know, whatever. So I wonder when you Google some of these darker products, does the Amazon's choice thing come up as, a, as an option like, oh, you're looking for some children's wear that's highly sexual and offensive. Here's our choice of that, you know, topic. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, that's interesting. You can kind of trick the system into having them recommend you some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wonder if, if the algorithm is so broken with Amazon <laughs> or so unsupervised that, they would even have an Amazon's choice option in amongst, um, you know, I love C-O-C-K. Well, Aaron, it's been a weird week. This is a lot of strange stuff happening all within a matter of days. Like yeah. I, I've said this, I've said this many times in the show is with the, um, with listeners sharing the bizarre stories from their hometowns or little corners of the country the stuff that comes across our desks that we flag and bring to this this show each week we could do this this we could do two or three episodes of this uh, a week i think so yeah. the amount of stuff that's mm-hmm. going on but um well i wonder what we'll do next week do you got any plans anything you want to work on for next week or change or shake up for this show yeah um no Okay, because I I have something that I'm investigating. Let me end with this. Oh, okay. So did you ever get on your cell phone, you just get like a random like ad or something text to you, like just some random like thing, like, uh, I don't know, get $20 off of Rolexes. And then there's like a URL or something. And you're like, weird, like spam that's being texted to me. You have that kind of thing, right? I get to, what I tend to get is... Um a random number saying hello how are you and it's like some area code from you know some random place in the united states or something i've been getting that lately i can't even make this up i got the most accurately targeted spam text message to my cell phone and now i should also say i have two cell phones one is like my own cell phone 
and then the other one is like my podcast cell phone. So if I'm ever doing anything related to my podcast or giving out a number for my podcast or taking calls related to my podcast, I use my podcast phone number. All right. And that one gets all sorts of spam and junk mail and stuff because the number's out there. But my personal cell phone uh, is completely unconnected from the show. So I just want to make that clear because this is a text that came to my personal cell phone. It's from a 604 area code, which I think is Alberta. And I, I had to read it a few times because I'm like, is this someone I know that's screwing with me? Because it's so relevant to some of the things I think about. So here's what the text message says. <laughs> I just feel led to get this out, but I'm here to tell you that judgment is eminent upon this world. The world as we know it will be changed forever and nothing will go back to the way it was. A mass blackout, massive earthquakes, massive tsunamis, famine, and war across the nations will very soon come upon earth. And then there's a YouTube link. Urgent, God loves you so much and he can only save you from what's coming. The mark of the beast will also be implemented very soon, which comes in the form of a small chip the size of a grain of rice. It will be enforced upon the nations and will soon be mandatory. It will be inserted into your hand or forehead. Do not take the coming chip. It will change your DNA and will make you permanently irredeemable. I also want to point out that aliens are demons. Do not believe the alien invasion of NASA will, be pulled up, will pull off. Starlink and Project Bluebeam will be used for the alien invasion. Do not believe their lies. I have proof. And then there is just like literally 25 links to YouTube videos. And I went through and I like copied and pasted them. And they're just all random like conspiracy YouTube videos about chips, aliens, flat earth. And that was, I don't know. It's like it on, on. Yeah. It's not even like they're trying to sell you a product. Or no, anything. it's just it's like, it's like, who the hell is this? So I wrote back to the person. Of course you did. And yeah, being like, I'm interested. I want to learn more. You know, how did you get my number? And they haven't responded. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to just call them at some point and see if I can. I'll probably do it on a different episode, like mm -hmm. on a, maybe on a UFO themed episode. I'm going to give them a call and uh, see if. I don't know. See what they have to say. Well, I mean, it's it sounds like they've said it's, everything they have to say because they have no more to tell you. They won't respond back. But I wonder if they're just going through, like, you know. Uh, I think it's just numbers. Yeah, I think they just got a bank of numbers and they're just sending it. It's a mass kind of uh, message. I don't think they're specifically like I need to get through to Jordan. Well, because even if they did, I get weird texts, but they wouldn't be. It's usually a, like emails, mails or text to my podcast. Mm. phone. This is my personal phone. Um, and it's yeah, like maybe they just have this and they're like 902-111-1111 text. 902-111-1112 text. Or they have some kind yeah, of. Yeah, and I think thing. there's probably like computer program cracking things that you know will send out a mass message to a bunch of phone yeah. numbers well, hopefully i can get to the bottom of it and if so i'll let you all know well let's wrap this up aaron yeah let's wrap it up in a nice ball until next time until next time george enjoy the fan at your it pool ramona easy being cheesy I want to thank you for joining Aaron and I for our Keep Canada Weird discussion. But before we part, I want to give some thanks. First, a big thanks to Aaron for sharing another evening with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. I'd also like to thank the Internet's favorite cult leader, Unicole, for supplying the intro and outro voiceovers. And a special thanks to Nick from True Crime Garage for providing his voice to the trailer for the new Airport album. But with all that said, the most important thanks goes to all of you listening, as without your interest and your support, nighttime would be as pointless as it would be impossible. But with that said, keeping the show alive is and has always been an uphill battle. So if you want to help take a bit of weight off the show's back, make sure you're listening on the premium feed. Not only does it make the show possible, the premium feed will give you more of each topic than you'll find here on the free feed, as I'm adding exclusive content regularly. So for both the price of a cup of coffee, go premium at patreon.com slash nighttime podcast. And on the topic of the premium feed, let me thank the newest subscribers, Brad, Kim, Brittany, and Christina. Thank you for your generous support. 
And if anyone out there has any story ideas, wants to give feedback on the show, or would like to contribute a voice memo for an upcoming episode, you can do all that and more at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. Aaron and I hope to hear from you. But until then, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte. Copyright Jordan Bonaparte.